Structure the Conversation is a tool that we use to deepen conversations with clients. It's fairly easy to do. Let me walk you through the steps. There are five. The first step is to make a quick list of all of the issues. The second step is to make sure that that list is complete. The third step is to find out which priority on the list is most important. And then the fourth step is to gather evidence and impact on the priority issue. The fifth step is to summarize all of what you've heard and then end by asking two questions. Did I get it right? And did I leave anything out? What Scott and I are going to do is walk you through the mechanics of how you would structure a conversation. The example we're going to use is a situation where Scott's been transferred in his job. He's moving to the area and he's working with me as a realtor to find a home. So we'll walk you through the example. We'll try to make it easy to see the differences in each of those five steps. See if you can follow along making a note of where we are in the process. So thanks, I'm uh, delighted for the call and the opportunity to work with you, Scott. I understand you're moving here to the area because of a transfer in your job. And so our job is to find a home. I I'd like to find the perfect home for you. So rather than just hop in the car and go out and look at homes and areas, what I like to do is I like to start by uh, just asking for a quick list of those things that are important to you as you think about a new home. Okay. Well, as no surprise to you, location is pretty critical. Shopping and school and mm -hmm. all those types of activities, so that's important. The other thing is um, I'm not much of a handyman, and as a result, I'd like to get uh, some new construction here. And then, of course, budget's a big deal. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. So uh, anything else? Well, we'd like it to be open. Have a good open feel to it. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we'd like it to be private. Okay. Now, we might end up in a, a single um, a place with some land and a single home, or we might end up in the city in a condo. We'd just like it to be as private as possible. Okay. Well, let's see what we can accomplish. Uh, anything else? No, I think, think that would be it. Okay. Of the things that you mentioned, location, newer construction, budget, open, private, which of those would you say is the most important? Open, for sure. Okay. So let's dive a little bit deeper into that, make sure I understand what you're looking for. Uh, how would you describe open? Well, I think the first thing that would help me is in any area of the home where we're going to be spending a lot of time, we'd like it to be wide open, meaning uh, not a lot of walls in between. For instance, if you take the kitchen and maybe the dining area and the family room, what we'd like to do is not have walls there, have high ceilings and a big open feeling there. Mm -hmm. That way we're not ever missing out on what's going on in any of the rooms because we gather there a lot. So okay. that's a pretty important thing for us. Okay. What now, else? I think the other thing that we're looking for is just to have some larger uh, bedrooms, you know, maybe something that's 10 by 12. So it's not too tight and cramped, just a lot of space there in each of these rooms. Okay. Good. Anything else? I think the, probably the best descriptor for me is just a lot of windows. Hmm. We like to have a lot of natural light and uh, just give this open feeling even outside of our place. Okay. In fact, we might even want to have uh, lighter color paint as opposed to darker oh, color okay. paint. Yeah, I think that also contributes to a much more open feel in a home. Okay, good. I think I'm starting to get a sense for what you're looking for and what you mean when you say open. Now the question that's rolling through my mind is, of all the things on your list that you could have chosen as the priority, what is it about open that makes that so critical for you? Well, it's something that we've had uh, in most of our homes. We love this uh, feeling of oneness, you know, we're all together. Mm -hmm. But the thing that's made it so important on this move, just recently my teenage son uh, was diagnosed with a medical condition, one that we didn't know anything about. It's called SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. Mm -hmm. We just thought it was teenage problems mm -hmm. and found out that uh, for him to function well and to just be upbeat and uh, full of life, if he can have a lot of natural light Mm. It makes a huge difference for him. Wow. So in addition to the, just the normal culture that we have, we, we find this to be a really important thing for us right now. I can see that. Okay. So, all right. This really helps. I appreciate you sharing all of this information. 
Let me just make sure I've got an accurate capture of this and then we'll put together a tour of homes. So location, new construction, has to fit within your budget, openness, uh, open feeling, and private. Yes. And the, of those, the most important was open feeling. And you would describe that as, you know, just this culture that you've developed in your family, whether it's with family or friends, that in the areas where you spend a lot of time, like the kitchen, the dining room, and the family room, you don't want any separation there, walls getting in the way, so that when you're in the kitchen, you can still be connected with what's going on in the other areas. Uh, big bedrooms you mentioned, uh, larger than normal, 10 by 12, so that it doesn't feel so cramped and confined. Uh, and lots of windows, big windows, so that it allows lots of natural sunlight in. And uh, even lighter colors on the walls, which would, I imagine, help reflect that light. Yes. And all of that is important, and maybe even more so in this move than previous moves, because of this medical condition that your teenage son has, where the seasonal affective disorder affects his positivity, his outlook, and you know his energy, and all of that. So it's really essential that he get natural sunlight. That's right. Did I perfect get it right? Yeah. Anything missing? No, not at all. Perfect. Well, what this will allow me to do is to put together a tour of homes that will better meet these needs instead of guessing. So I really appreciate this. This is going to help us both in our search for the perfect home for you. Sounds great. I can't wait to get started. Great. So what you just saw is a structured conversation that I had with Scott about his purchase of a home. You should have recognized the five steps to structuring a conversation. I started out by making a list of issues that were important to him. And quite often, a customer will stop and you have to prompt them. So the second step is make sure that the list is complete. Then find out which one is most important. Now, as they give you the most important one, that's when you're going to go in depth and look for evidence and impact. Now the evidence on the most important issue is just proof and Scott provided that in terms of no walls and bedrooms of a certain size and lots of windows and even wall color. Now you'll notice that the impact is a little bit different and it's the motivation behind what he's looking for. And he gave that to me in the sense of his son who has a medical condition. Then you should have recognized that I summarized, fed all of that information back to him and then I asked, did I get it right and did I leave anything out? And as soon as we hear the confirmation from the customer that that information is accurate, then we're good to move on to the next part of our conversation. Structure the conversation. It's a great tool to deepen your understanding of what they mean, what they want, and how you can help them.